Welcome. In this video we're going to teach you about transformations. Now in other videos we have addressed some of these things as similar. For example, we have learned how to make adjustments as far as the shape of ours. So we could do a, let's see, an image, image rotation, and change the direction of our picture. Now I want you to understand that this is applying to the whole document. Okay, so if I turn this 180 degrees and flip it upside down, that's applying to the whole document. I'm going to step backward. And while we can do things like that to the whole document and then work with them, you can actually do them on the fly while adjusting them inside another image. Let's go ahead and take this merge sky image and let's take it into the lone tree picture. Now I have both of these open at the moment. I have the lone tree PSD. Notice it's already got a mask on it. And then I also have the merge sky. Now I can't just take this file directly into the lone tree because it's set as a background layer, which is a special type of background, a special type of layer that doesn't allow you to just copy things and do things. It's got a lock on it. So there's things you could do. You could try to select all, control A, and maybe do a copy and jump over here and do a paste, but that actually takes a while. Okay, I'm going to step backward on that and return to my merge sky. I'm going to deselect using control D to deselect. So what I could do instead is take this background and just turn it into a normal layer. It won't be able to be saved as a JPEG anymore because that always flattens it. I mean, you can save it, but you would flatten it. Uh, but if you just double click the word background here, it's going to ask you to make a new layer. And you click OK, and now you have a new layer to work with. Now that it's a standard layer, uh, you can take that and drag it in to the other picture. Let me show you how that works. You want to make sure you go to your move tool and whatever layer you're on, you're not dragging the layer, you're dragging the picture in the layer, right? So you take the picture and you tap and hold and you hold down your mouse button or you hold down your pen until you see Lone Tree PSD and you keep holding, keep holding, and then you can let go once you're down in the picture. If you let go anywhere in be before that, it won't actually drag. If you just wait for this and just try and drag it to the, the little title up here, the tab, it's not going to work. you got to make sure you drag it and drop it in here and hold down the button the entire time. I'm going to do that one more time just to make sure you got it. Start with Merge Sky. I'm going to click and hold my Move tool, drag it over, wait, wait, wait till white, wait, 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 pull down, and let go. And that's how you get them over. Now. I was speaking of transformations. This picture here is a Kansas sky. I'm not exactly sure where I took the other one. Uh, I want to say it was at some type of a special house. Uh, I was at special like plantation or something maybe down near Charleston. Anyway, but I want to put these two together. Now, one thing obviously we would want to put it behind it, but we'll we'll worry about the layer stack later. Right now, I'm just going to go ahead and rename this sky. So that's what it's called. That makes sense. And the sky layer, I want to show you some transformations we can do. Now, one of the things you can do is if you're on the move tool, you can just have the transformation controls always showing. There's a little checkbox up here. And by default, I keep it off uh, for me because I think it's tough to work when you always have these things popping around. I'm going to show you another reason why you probably want to have it off as well later on. So let's say I want to do this. Now, if the transform controls are on, I can move my mouse to the corner and I can grab one of these corners. And you see I can stretch this out anyway. I'm going to hit uh, escape just to undo that. I'm still showing my transform controls. Uh, you can move just outward of it and you can rotate it. See, I can spin that layer. Okay. I'm going to cancel it a different way. Escape is just like hitting this little no symbol. All right. So you can enlarge it or rotate it, okay, all while just having the show transform controls on. You don't have to really do anything special. Now, if you are going to transform something, I want you to understand that there's an importance to understand about the constraining of proportions, okay? For example, if this was a person and I stretched them out like this, they would look like a fun mirror. They'd be really tall. Now, something like a sky, I don't think it's too big of a deal. I mean, skies kind of look like skies all the time. Clouds can look just about anything. So 
it's okay to do it probably in a situation like a sky. But for a person, you don't want to do that. So let me show you the proper way to enlarge. If I was going to enlarge this, I would want to hold down shift, all right? And when you hold down shift or the uh, little button above the dot in the um, on the uh, tablet, when you hold down, you can't squish it. You can't make it look a different proportion, okay? This is extremely important. If there's one thing you learn during my class, and, and that is that is to make sure that when you're using pictures, you constrain proportions, okay? So if you're enlarging something, make sure you're constraining proportions. All right. Now, uh, let's take a look at doing that another way. I'm going to hit Escape, and I'm going to turn off my Show Transform Controls. And I'm going to show you the better way to do this. The better way is that whenever you are working on enlarging or transforming something, rather than having Show Transform, just do a Control T. You hold down Control and tap T. And it's going to bring up the Transform Controls. Notice you're also going to have more options here. You see there's some more, more things here that are going on. For example, I can tell it to be an exact size. I can tell it to be a particular size. Okay, so I can make this be 50 pixels wide, which would be really skinny, right? Notice, um, oh, that's the position there. That's the position I changed. Uh, if you did the actual um, values, you could do that over here. So the width, I could make it be 50% of what it was. And you see now it's it's much shorter, right, uh, across. So anyway. I'm going to hit escape on that and notice that when I hit escape, the uh, tra transform controls are gone. That's what I like about it. See, when having the show transform controls on, whatever layer you're on is going to get those little things. They're always on. And you also don't know, are you in the middle of a transformation or not? You know, you, you have to look up here to see if you're in the middle of a transformation. So they see now I'm in the middle of a transformation. Some of the stuff gets grayed out. Some of the menus don't work anymore. You see all these little things are all gray. That's because I'm in the middle of a transformation. It's waiting for me to accept or, or discard the transformation changes. However, when you turn it off and you do a control T, which is also under edit free transform, you you always know if you see the little guys around this you don't even have to look up here to know that you're needing to uh, finish the transformation you've got the little squares around the edge you know you can grab any of them I'm doing a transformation I can't do other things until I'm done with it okay so I like to keep it off also so I get this these values up here so I can make you know particular rotations and stuff like that all on the fly you can still do the same things you can still do your rotation can move the center here which is your anchor point and you can tell it to scroll from that or enlarge from that point rather than from the center and you see how it grows from the center I'm hit escape I'm gonna try it again here I'm gonna go control T this time uh, I'm gonna hold down shift and grab the corner you see how enlarged it's enlarging from the corner if I hold down alt as well it'll enlarge from the middle and zoom out you see how it's zooming out evenly so I'm holding down shift and alt uh, you can hold down the alt and it'll allow you to um, go around the the middle as well. If you hold down shift while rotating, it's going to give you like consistent angles. See, I'm I'm jumping rather than just being smooth. It's like going to jump exactly to you know like a 90 degree or whatever these particular degree values are. Uh, what does it say? 15, 30. So it's like doing every 15 degrees. All right. So you can do some of those. You can also check your values up here to know exactly how much those are turning. And like I said, this stuff doesn't show up up here if you're on the move tool and you just have your show transform controls on. I'm going to click escape. Let's take a look at some of the other transformations we can do. I'm going to go under edit, transform, and there's all these ones you can do individually. There's one called scale. That's going to make it get bigger and smaller. There's rotate. Does rotate. Obviously, free transform does those already. There's skew. Let's take a look at skew. Skew, when you grab one of the corners, it makes the other one move too. And you see, I can move them in conjunction. This is kind of giving you a little 3D effect, right? You can see how that you know changes the angles all weird. Uh, I'm going to cancel that and let's show you another one. Edit, transform, distort. Distort I use a lot when I'm trying to match something. So let's say I wanted to take a picture of a billboard and replace the billboard with my graphics. I could say distort and then you just take this and make it fit that particular shape. So if it's like 
the same shape as this. I can make it the exact shape just by grabbing the corners. Okay, I'm going to cancel that as well. Uh, let's take a look at this other one here. Edit transform. We've got perspective. Perspective, they work together. So you see how I move one and it moves the others. Right, so that's a good way to do perspective stuff where it makes it look kind of 3D, like it's moving back into the distance. I'm going to hit escape to cancel that. I'm going to do another one here, edit, transform, and warp. Warp is a really fun one. Okay, first thing I think I want to do is maybe make this a little bigger. So I'm going to control T, transform. I'm going to grab the corner, shift, click, make it a little bigger, like so. All right, so what I could do is take this and warp it some. So I'm going to do edit transform and warp notice I can do this I still haven't completed my transformation but these are still available so you can start with a free transform and then go back and do some other things and until you hit enter you can rotate it change it whatever you want so it's always good to if you think you're gonna to have to do multiple types of transforms to not hit enter right away to not hit the checkbox right away and continue on to the other uh, distortion you're doing so let's do a warp and you'll see you get this grid and you get these little handles. This allows you to make things look round, for example. See, I can stretch out things, right? Make it look all round, right? Like so. You can grab in the middle too. You see how it twists around? Okay, so this is a really easy way to warp your picture, okay? So I'm gonna warp that like so. Pull this down a little bit more so you can still enlarge as well. And it's just going to allow you to bend the pixels exactly how you want. All right. So it's a really cool thing. Uh, let's see. These other ones we'll talk about individually. I'm going to go ahead and uh, accept these particular transforms by hitting the checkbox here. I also could have hit enter. And you see, now I have this. It's ready to go. Now, what I want to do is just quickly talk, you about, talk to you about these other ones. Uh, rotate 180 degrees. These are going to obviously rotate set amounts and they're different than the rotating of the whole image okay when you do the image rotation they look the same but these are for a layer so when you do edit transform these rotates are for a layer only not the whole document there's also flip horizontal and vertical which are great for mirroring things okay so if you ever have a, to do a reflection in the water for example if this grass was water I could flip this upside down and put it in the water Below. So these are just great uses there. We'll use that later on. Now, at this point, I want to put the sky behind the tree. And I'm going to show you how to put something behind it. You know, you got to think about this just like shuffling a piece of paper. Take it and drag it underneath. And now it's behind your image. All right. Now, I don't like the way this is looking right now. I'm seeing too much of these light colors around the edge. So I think I need to brighten up my sky at the bottom. So I'm going to show you how to brighten up the sky. Now there's a couple things you could do. Number one, you could add a mask. And I could take my gradient tool, which is down here in the middle. It might look like a paint bucket to you. So you could switch it over to a gradient tool. And notice it's on black to white already. If it's not on it, you could always just click this little arrow here and find it. Okay. And I'm going to use the black to white, and I'm having it in normal mode. And let's see which direction it works here. I'm going to start somewhere in my trees here. And notice I am still working on the mask. And I'm just going to drag up. Now I'm going to hold down shift so my line lines up. So remember, shift always straighten things, aligns things. Shift is a very good thing to hold down when you're trying to be precise. And then I'm going to let go and see how it looks. You see how it just faded that away? Okay, so that made a nice little fade. I also could have done that another way. I'm going to show you one other way to do that here. I'm going to uh, go ahead and just delete my layer mask. I'm going to show you another way to do it. I'm going to zoom out. And I'm going to take my old rectangle tool. And notice my feather is at zero. Make sure yours is at zero. And I'm going to click and drag around the sky here. Not quite to the bottom. All right. And so now I have this all selected. Right. What I can do is add a feather after the fact. So watch, I'm going to go select, modify, and I'm going to add a feather. This feathering, I'm going to tell it to do uh, 300 pixels, which means it's going to feather downward 300 and upwards 300. Let's see how that looks. Oh, I can only do 250. Look, it's going to tell me when I, I can't go that far. So no problem, I'll do it 250. And I'm going to click OK. And what will happen is you'll be like, it looks the same. But the truth is, 
the bottom edge is feathered. And because I selected to the very edge, I started outwards. Okay, so there is no feathering on these three sides. There's only feathering at the bottom. So now that I have that, if I just tap the mask icon, so I have a selection that's feathered on the bottom, and I tap the mask icon, I get the same thing. So you can see how that worked. It blurred away, faded away to black, which made it erase. So now that you have this all set up like this, I want you to go ahead and save it. And this is, needs to be saved in a working folder because I don't want to see copies of this necessarily. I want to just see one file. So go ahead and save this and, and we'll get back to it and add some more things to it in the next video.